Welcome to Talk Dizzy to Me, the show that brings you a comprehensive look into the complex field of dizziness. Now here are your hosts, vestibular physical therapist, Dr. Abby Ross and Dr. Danielle Tolman. Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dizzy to Me. My name is Dr. Danielle Tolman. I'm a vestibular physical therapist and as always joined by my co-host, Dr. Abby Ross, who is a vestibular physical therapist and neuroclinical specialist. And today we have a really, really special guest that I am very excited to have on our show. She is a former coworker, colleague, and a great friend of mine, Dr. Sabrina Sladek. Welcome, Sabrina. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We are so excited about our topic today because we get a lot of people that actually write in and ask us for some advice. So recently, over the last year, um, Dr. Sladek here has been setting up her very own vestibular clinic. So we wanted to get a good general run through of what that looks like, um, how successful that's been for her, and get some of the good tips and tricks that she has to give us along the way for any of you who might be interested in setting up your own clinic. So Sabrina, why don't you give us a little bit of a background on yourself? Sure. Um, So I had a little bit of interest in vestibular therapy about 10 years ago. I took a very basic class um, and could pretty much only do the Epley maneuver and a few bedside maneuvers um, until Danielle came and she became our balance director. And she really taught me so much um, and really inspired me to get more involved in this specialty, this niche which is absolutely amazing. And working with you has been so great and working with our whole clinic and building that program was so much fun. And it's amazing to see what you've taken now and grown this whole new you know, clinic at yourself, which is absolutely amazing. You've got social media presence, you've got people and uh, like a full staff working with you now. Um, I'm really, really excited to kind of dig into this. So um, when was your decision to start to open this clinic? Like what kind of led you to this path? Well, um, I had gotten to the point where I was ready for growth opportunity. I wanted more responsibility. Um, I wanted the ability to specialize more with this patient population. So neurological, um, balance and vestibular. Um, And so really reached out to a former um, boss of mine uh, when I was a tech, (laughs) so many years ago, um, and we had the conversation about potentially opening a vestibular balance clinic under his orthopedic clinic. So it was a specialty that he was not as well versed in um, and um, kind of went from there. Yeah, that's a really good point and a uh, way to address you wanting to establish your own practice. You know, instead of establishing from ground zero, you need a building, you need administrative staff, you need emails, website, all of that jazz. You actually went to an already established clinic and said, hey, here's what I can bring to the table. What can you bring to the table for me? And you joined forces. Yes. It's, it's, so that's yeah, I'm sorry. I was gonna say it's a really great way to not get involved with the whole credentialing process too. Because you know, when you go to start your own clinic, if if you want to accept insurance, which we highly recommend for this patient population, just because most of them are Medicare age or Medicare Advantage plan age, um, accepting insurance is a big roadblock for some of those patients to get care. So going through credentialing and everything is enough to make your head spin. Mm -hmm. I think that going to somebody and saying, here's what I can bring to your clinic. If you trust in me to help you out with this program is a great approach to kind of get this off the ground and off the ground quickly. Yeah, it's been, it's working out really well that with exactly how you mentioned it. Um, We didn't have to worry about credentialing. Um, The front office staff was already taken care of, so people could call right away, start scheduling appointments. Um, The billing program was already set in place, so that was very helpful. Great. Now, this is more of a business plan, financial question. Did you guys become partners then, or how did you set that up from from a business perspective? Great question. So basically we mapped out what it would cost to have this clinic. Um, So the way we have it set up, we're in the same building, but it's a separate um, office. And um, once Milo or my boss can make what he needs to make, I can make the extra. So once we were able to hit certain numbers, 
after that was um, what I was making. So basically, once he received back his investment. His investment plus whatever he needs currently. So he's still making money off the clinic up to a certain point. And then I can make the extra. So I had to work. Um, I had to see so many patients in a day. So basically, once I could hire on another therapist, and really, once I got two additional staff, that was where I was starting to see more money. Yeah, that's great. Now, the other thing that people might think of when they're wanting to start a clinic is, where am I going to get my patients from? There's only so many you can pull from your old job, right, who want to follow you to your next place. How did you go about getting referrals? So that was another um, nice thing was that uh, my current boss was already, he already had good relationships with the neuro, uh, neurology clinic. They used to be in the building. Um, so we knew right off the bat, we were going to have one source of referrals. Um, but in addition to that, I had made a list of all of the local neurologists, ENTs, um, neurotologists, uh, visual neurologists, um, so, and primary care. So um, listed out those, we um, discussed things with already the existing relationships with the primary care that we're referring to Milo in the past um, years. So we let them know what we were doing. Um, and then of course, previous patients and doctors that already referred to me, um, word of mouth was really big. I mean, we just started talking about it. We talked about it to all the patients we were seeing upstairs and then they would say, oh, my sister, she's dizzy. And so um, they would start, so we just, you wanna keep telling as many people as possible. Um, the other thing though, I registered on the VITA website. Um, so the Vestibular Disorders Association. So that way patients and other doctors or clinicians can search in your area and then find you as a vestibular clinician um, treating patients. Um, another one was we are all LSVT big certified. So on their website, which is the LSVT global, um, we're, we're listed as clinicians in our area as well. So people could find us that way. Um, and I'm not sure if listeners know what LSVT big is, but that's a um, specific treatment program for patients with Parkinson or a movement dysfunction. Um, so those were all ways that we kind of got things started. That's great. And it's all, a lot of it sounds very organic, right? Uh, word of mouth is huge in this field. Um, but also just having a good idea of the area, the referral sources in the area, and then being, again, that, that um, commonality of having a already established clinic and using their referral sources, which is huge. Um, you know, I'm just starting a, a new venture and I'm starting to market all that stuff again. So I, I'm definitely feeling that little uh, um, bit of a jolt of going into all these offices now and explaining the program and getting excited about it. So it's easy to get excited and talk about these things because a lot of people want a good place to send their patients for dizziness and balance. A lot of physicians here dizzy and they don't want anything to do with it. So um, by making yourself known in the area, talking to patients, word of mouth, doing a little bit of marketing, um, it should be pretty easy to take off at that point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, so now you've got you've got your building, you've got your administrative administrative staff, you have all the insurance lined up through the pre existing clinic, and then you've got your patients coming. What does your setup look like? What are your must haves in your clinic to treat this patient population? Sure. So um, I wanted the clinic uh, to be set apart from other clinics. I wanted it to be have a special something also. Um, I didn't want it to be too basic. Um, but the, the items we started with were the solo step safety overhead system. Um, I had used it in the past and really liked it. Uh, so we we have that, we have two rails of that here. So that way you can have four therapists working at the same time. Um, we got the vestibular first IVOG goggles. So the infrared video oculography goggles um, that helps really um, with our examinations and treatments for BPPV. Um, I have a Wii board. I already had that at home. Um, 
we our larger items here we have a set of stairs we have some parallel bar one pair parallel bar um we have recumbent bike i thought i was going to want a treadmill but ended up i really haven't needed it um so if i do need one i go upstairs to the ortho clinic um for maybe a concussion patient patient um, I have two low treatment tables. So those are the wide, low, low ones. You could probably see it behind me Ooh, the other way. Um, so that way um, I can treat patients with BPPV or do bed mobility. Um, I have two regular sized treatment tables with the hole in it so that you can do um, all of your manual therapies. Um, we do dry needling as well. Um, you have to think about your waiting room. You want patients to be comfortable when they're in the waiting room. So that's kind of evolved over time when it was just me here. I didn't need as much uh, there because there weren't as many people waiting. Um, as we've gained um, therapists, we've had more people in the waiting room. So that was something I should have thought about sooner. <laughs> um, you need to think about your office furniture. So your computer, your printer, your desks. Um, then out in the gym, the go-tos are going to be your foam, your hurdles. So we have two different size hurdles, six inches and nine inches. I have a few different types of tilt boards, um, different balls, different size balls, soccer ball, um, soft squishy ball, uh, Swiss balls, so the large balls. Um, we have TheraBands, a TRX, a BOSU. Um, and cones and ankle weights. So it's it's not super fancy, but it's enough to do everything we need to do. Well, it sounds like it's a lot of stuff that you would find in a traditional PT clinic, right? With your TheraBands and the different types of, you know, um, more people are getting the balance of those tilt boards and Swiss balls and things like that, which is great. Some of the more specialized are those IVOG goggles, like you had mentioned. Is, is that a TV on your wall that you hook your IVOG goggles up to? Yes. Yep. I and I got, I was inspired by Danielle and her <laughs> former office. <laughs> well, it's nice to be able to see a big blown up picture of those eyeballs uh, while you've got both hands on your patients instead of craning your neck to look back at a computer. So I love that. That's one of my favorite Definitely. things. Of the, clinic. the other thing I really like is the um, head laser um, for maze and tracking and all kinds of things. So that was one I didn't mention. For cervical proprioception? You got it. Yeah. I actually had some patients buy that because when you think on the opposite end, not in clinic, but telehealth, you don't have all this fancy stuff or maybe even just the basic stuff you might not have readily available. I will vouch that you can still provide really great quality vestibular care, but certainly the preference would be to have the goggles, the low mat, the high mat, everything at your, at your hands to treat patients. But I think your list is very comprehensive. As a starting therapist, if you're just starting the clinic, funds can be tight, right? So yeah, this is a, a great list, but think about maybe just a few things that you need because certainly you don't need all of those things to successfully treat. Correct, yep. I will say that the, the technology, like the goggles, um, is definitely a big marketing tool for those specialists that are looking for a place to send their patients that really do specialize in vestibular. So for, for those of you who are listening, if you're really serious about getting a nice clinic put together and being kind of the spot for everyone to send those referrals, having a set of those um, video goggles is, is uh, pretty important, but can also be very helpful for marketing because um, they're going to want to see that you have that technology. Patients love it too. They love seeing their eyeball. It's amazing to me how many uh, patients are absolutely astounded when they see nystagmus for the first time or their spouses see their, their um, you know, loved ones nystagmus on the TV. They think that they were faking it the whole time and there it is blown up right now for them to see. So it's definitely a, it's a nice thing to have. It's one of those really, really good things to have. Um, but not necessarily a, a huge need if you're just getting started. But luckily, mm -hmm. there's lots of new models coming out on the market, like vestibular firsts that have uh, an affordable price tag attached to them, which is nice. And then there's yeah. some higher end, you know, goggles and stuff too. But, um, you know, what you set up is definitely comprehensive. And you can tell that you guys are, are pretty serious about your vestibular imbalance program. Thank you. <laughs> Let's so see. another another thing to think about as you're starting your venture in treating vestibular patients. Maybe you're not actually doing your own clinic, but you're 
started, you're the therapist in an already established clinic that is seeing people just for maybe BPPV. What kind of resources did you find helpful in learning more about vestibular care? And then also as a clinician with um, seeing or expanding beyond BPPV? Yeah, so um, definitely finding what resources are helpful is important, especially when you're opening a clinic. The ones that I found to be the most helpful for us, um, starting off with uh, VITA, so the vestibular.org, um, they have clinician and patient information, classes, educational material, research, things that you can print out for your patients. Um, so their website, Vestibular Today, um, they have, there's uh, videos, information, clinicians information, even evaluations if you need to print them off. Um, also a list of some uh, equipment needed for, the, um, for your clinic. Vestibular First, so the goggles that I have, um, again, more educational resources listed there. Um, podcasts, so talk dizzy to me. I have loved every topic that you guys talk about. Um, you can listen and learn about Meniere's. You can, um, so, and those I do when I'm watching my kids soccer practice or I'm going on a run. Um, those are nice go-tos. Um, having a good mentor is has been really helpful. So Danielle has been my mentor for I don't know how long. And um, just to kind of shoot ideas, get information. Um, and then for continuing ed, I've really liked MedBridge. It's been easy. Um, lots of different classes on there, certification that Jeff Walter has. Um, so those are a lot of the resources that we've been using. Um, and then LSVT Global for our Parkinson's treatment um, for the um, LSVT Big program. That has been another one. Those are some really good resources. I mean, Abby and I are uh, part of VITA. Uh, we sit on the board, so we definitely speak highly about VITA almost every episode because um, they've got a lot of great opportunities and things for members. If you become a pro member and you get on that provider directory. But I remember first coming out of school, I think I was on VITA almost every single day looking up information to print off to patients and stuff that I needed to read about and learn about. So, um, you know, having good resources like that is really important. But all, like you had mentioned, having someone to talk and bounce ideas off of. Um, if you have a clinic that you're kind of bringing this to, having somebody to talk to about cases and kind of be like, what about this? What about that? Is extremely helpful, especially when um, you might be unsure about a patient or whatnot. Um, yeah. And I can vouch for the MedBridge courses. I've taken quite a few of them as my licenses needed renewal. A lot of the vestibular courses on there are wonderful. And Danny does make a guest appearance, I think, on a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely check those out if you are interested in getting CEUs or just general knowledge for vestibular care. Now let's kind of move in more toward marketing. So we've talked about it a little bit when we were speaking on how you got patients, but what does your marketing plan look like moving forward now that you're an established clinic? So great idea. And if you don't mind um, going back a little bit um, with the marketing, the first thing I did was made business cards and then kept those with me all the time. So I'm at swim team. I'm handing out my business cards um, at the doctor's office. I'm handing out business cards. Um, and you run into people all the time that are like, oh, you're a physical therapist. Yeah, but I do vestibular therapy. Oh, I, I have dizziness. And they're like, oh, here's my card. <laughs> so that was the very first thing. And I used Vistaprint for those. Um, then we made long flyers. Um, and I meant to have one out here. Um, we made long flyers um, that are like a brochure, but just one page. Mm -hmm. So a few pictures on the front, your information, and then what you treat on the back and how you can be reached at the bottom. So very simple. Um, and those patients and doctors love those. They're so easy. Um, give them exactly what information they need. Um, other marketing things are doing a podcast like this, <laughs> which I'm so thankful for. Um, we created a website using GoDaddy um, and then we also um, joined, signed up with Instagram and Facebook. 
Uh, so those have been interesting. Instagram is a fun one to do where um, we kind of post little pictures of when um, a patient has graduated um, and the patients really enjoy that. Um, but going into the future, I'd like to start um, reaching out to the community a little bit more. Um, so maybe doing a class at a uh, local retirement community. We've had some patients come and do, and they did the LSVT and they really wanted us to come and talk about the LSVT big, um, but really anything they'd want us to talk about so that we can get our information out there. Um, and then I would like to do a fun run to raise money for vestibular um, uh, patients and maybe even a Parkinson run. So those are other things that we're thinking about. That's always great to get out in the community. I remember going to a lot of the community centers and just doing a fall um, discussion or you know free fall screenings following a little lecture and they love it. I mean, the, the community loves hearing from you. You put your face out there. They learn more about your specialty. And suddenly you've got three, four or five patients that are coming and knocking on your door after something like that. So those are all fantastic things for marketing, especially I love your guys' social media presence. I love seeing um, patients and how happy they are when they're graduating and they're you know completing their time in physical therapy. You can see the reaction is genuine and that it's just something that really brings them a lot of a lot of joy to what they've just accomplished. So that's really, really great seeing. Thank you. So what about a timeline? You know, there's a lot that you've kind of pieced together um, as far as, you know, talking to the person that you were going to partner with, you know, working into the space, designing the space, filling the space, bringing on extra staff, um, going through all this. What does your timeline look like from when you started to where you are now? Great question. So I started in um, mid-December, so it was right before the holidays. So nothing was really happening until January, probably. Um, but then March, we rented the space and then we were given one month without having to pay. So that allowed us to really start getting the equipment in here, um, painting, getting the flooring in. Um, which was nice. And then April, I started to divide my time between the ortho clinic and down here, built up by June, I was down here full time, myself and a part time physical therapy assistant in June. And then October, mid October, we hired another full time physical therapist. And now by mid November, we're fully booked. So that's kind of the, the timeline. That's amazing. Uh, uh, just under a year, it sounds like, which is really, really great. That's a really fast startup, would you say, Abby? Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I, I definitely think that your route of going under an already established clinic really helped that. And it works for both parties, right? It's a win-win. It really was. So going through all of this, I'm sure there's things that you've found that are really great maybe some things that you might have done differently or kind of impeded or roadblocked your your progress is there any any type of um, do's and don'ts that you can give our listeners anything that you might suggest against or you might you know want them to be pushed towards rather than something else yeah i would say first um really doing your research right so have your plan all laid out visualize and maximize your space um so try to figure out how many therapists can be working in this space at the same time, and then prepare yourself for that maximized space. Um, so one of the roadblocks we hit was I didn't have enough things in here to allow for all three of us to be here when it happened. It was fine to get it later. It just ended up costing a little bit more um, due to shipping fees and things like that. Um, so if you can maximize what you're going to do right at the beginning, I would do it that way. Your your large items like your tables and things like that, it's a lot cheaper to ship it all at once. That's a good um, point. Uh, staffing is, is challenging. Um, so finding a physical therapist that um, is gonna work well with you and your clinic and love this specialty as well is kind of hard to find. So that took, I would say three months to find a therapist. So I wish I had started right away. 
So I would say start looking for your therapist right away. Um, and uh, did you the hire other thing, someone with vestibular experience then? Yeah, with experience or with the passion to learn more about it. Um, with experience is a lot, it's very helpful. Um, then you're not spending as much time with the training portion of it, but training is, is fun too. So either way, as long as the person's really loving what they do and loving treating this patient population. Um, realize that when you start things, it's gonna take time. And so this year I have not taken a full week vacation. So prepare yourself to spend that extra time. Um, and then, um, one thing that I realized, once you hire somebody, it takes around one to two months to fully fill their schedule. And then you also have to get your network to feel comfortable with that person. And that can sometimes take a little bit of time. So plan for around a month to two months to really fill that schedule um, for your new therapist. And then just a side note on um, kind of, we had our facility painted before having the flooring put in. And I've realized that get your flooring put in first and then have the painting done. <laughs> then you don't have to paint twice. Oh, I was going to ask, I would have thought it'd be the opposite. Get the painting done and then do the flooring so you don't mess up the flooring, but I, you think you I mess up the walls when the flooring I goes guess in? the trim work, it didn't oh. all line up wow. and... <laughs> it's a small stuff like that, right? <laughs> yeah. You mentioned something that was something to think about in terms of visualizing the, visualizing the space and where different therapists can work. Visualize that ahead of time, even though you're not at that point yet when you open your doors. But another thing that made me think of was um, when I worked in clinic, we were always battling over the goggles. So mm -hmm. another thing to think about is strate strategically scheduling patients when you know you're going to need goggles for an eval or a BPPV reassessment, schedule those patients in different blocks so that you're not fighting over the one pair in the office. <laughs> yeah, very true. So Sabrina, why don't I, let's, let's have you shout out your clinic. Can you give us information of where people can find you, follow you, uh, look at all of your new graduates that are coming up on social media? <laughs> so the name of our clinic is Germantown Balance and Vestibular Therapy. You can go to our website at www.dizzyden.com. You can find us on Instagram at dizzy.den and on Facebook, it's at the Dizzy Den, or you can look us up by the name Germantown Balance and Vestibular Therapy. You are welcome to email me if you want, sabrina.sladek at germantownpt.com as well. I'm happy to answer any questions. That's so generous of you. And we will, as always, post all of that information in the show notes. Dr. Sladek, it was great to have you on today. You really offered some great tips and advice to therapists out there that hopefully want to expand the vestibular reach across the United States and even world, because we do have listeners all over now. So thank you so much for coming on. And to our listeners, thank you as always as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. If you're interested in finding us on social media or the web, you can visit www.vestibular.today for more resources, including testing, treatment, and educational videos, blogs, continuing education classes, and resources including clinic equipment recommendations, suggested tests, and BPPV treatment charts. Search Vestibular Today and Balancing Neck Rehab on all social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Also, be sure to check out Balancing Act Rehab at www.balancingactrehab.com, especially if you think you would benefit from vestibular therapy. We are your girls. The information on this podcast is not intended to replace the care provided by your qualified health professional or to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on Talk Dizzy to Me. Please contact us at Balancing Act Rehab if you think you could benefit from vestibular therapy.